Right, greetings brothers and sisters. This is a just a quick um, look at the um, book of Thessalonians, Thessalonians, the first epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Thessalonians, the saints in Thessalonia, and it's regarding uh, some stirring in the body about what's the time that the Lord's going to come back for. The believer. So there's a, some divisions in the, these two books. So this is a, a brief study and some things to consider for the student because that's all I am, a student of the word and it's one of the things that every Bible believer will have to pray, will have to uh, examine and have to trust the Lord and the understanding of the, the scriptures and trust to what the scriptures teach. So having applied that myself and reviewing this doctrine, I just want to share some things in case there's anybody struggling or wondering about, you know, is there a rapture? And is that important? You know, is it important doctrinal um, point of scripture to contend for? Well, all scripture in its, in its significant context is worth contending for because if it's out of line it could potentially throw you off course so for the student don't trust what I say um, ignore ignore that because that that could be that could be accurate that could be private interpretation ignore your chapter headings just go with the scripture use those as a guide test with the look uh, your faith in the Lord and your your ability to learn and and fellowship with with your Savior and and grow in the Holy Spirit and to study the Word and be refreshed in the Word to be renewed in the the inner man in the new spirit so put your trust in in the scriptures not what I'm sharing uh, but what the Word of God teaches so I've just I am going to share some considerations and, and some things to consider if you're, especially for those who believe they're going through the tribulation, because for me that's a concern. A, because it stopped Israel from being saved and Judah, and and I, and I believe there's a division in the church that, that, that shouldn't really be there. And so uh, I'm going to try and tackle two birds with one stone. Now, the, the seed of Israel who are born-again believers in Christ who are of the seed of the genetic inheritance of uh, either Judah or, or Joseph or Israel, of Jacob, the, the seed of Abraham, what, whatever family line they come out, however they pop up, however um, genetics are dormant and they come out along further along the line, it's very, you know, however, whatever the seed and, and the sense of that uh, testimony of that soul who had a testimony of of, of the Lord and that, that of the blessings that they had graciously been born with and they, 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 they sort of like had a conscience for um, goodness they had they had a testimony of that goodness already installed into their into their inheritance but they also had uh, sin and it also had an incurable disease of years and years and generational problems. So there's a whole, whole scale of uh, genetic faults in the human race as well as in the Hebrew seed. So there's no difference between Jew and Gentile in, in this day and age. So that's very important to realise. Except that the, the, the Jews are still the inheritance of their, their blood. And they're still in the promise and the care and heart of Jehovah and, and and their Creator, and He is mindful of them. Although He's he, He's given the gospel and they've turned their back on Him, therefore given the Lord no other alternative to leave them in their blindness. But that doesn't mean the gospel isn't the Lord isn't outstretched for all to repent. See, this is where you need to carefully um, contextualize the whole all, all the prophecy all the whole plan of salvation dispensation of grace so I, 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 I'm going to share two simple things the division of the old and the new covenant 
including the old the old Israel and, and the new one in Christ Jesus, neither Jew nor Gentile. And also to stress if you if you are of the seed and you're born again, you're 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 removed from your old curse because you you've been cut off by unbelief, like like the Gentiles. You're in no you're in no more you're in no better position for the running. You're in a worse position than the Gentiles to take the high prize. So you're not special, but you are special in 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 Christ because you've got that inheritance. You've got that testimony. But you're no more important than the the, the Jew who's got the, exactly the same completion. And testimony of you had, and and now he is a full heir to um, sit on the throne of Christ, as he sits on the throne of his father. So there's there's neither Jew nor Gentile in the Christian body, and there's a separation in the Hebrew wing. Yeah, of course there's wings, like when you go to a wedding in a um, a traditional Christian church or or, or any or, or, or any wedding where they divide the the two bloodlines, you've got the fathers, the two fathers and the two mothers on opposite sides, the groom and the bride. The only difference is in, in Christ that the inheritance of the broom, of the groom, of the broom, of the groom, are now grafted in with the bride, but they share the inheritance of the groom. The groom's party are to be rescued in the Great Tribulation. And they are, and if you grafted into Christ today, you are a testimony to your fellow people, your fellow seed, to invite them to receive Christ before the great day of the Lord. You know, the, the scripture says, who, you know, who, who, would, who would cover after, and I'm paraphrasing the scripture, and it's a scripture I should have brought up in this uh, context, but who, who, you know, who would want the day of the Lord? Who would want the day of the Lord? Now, why would the Holy Spirit and the Lord and the and the Father give you that scripture, that one piece of scripture? And you need all the little pieces of scripture, and you need the bigger pieces of scripture. You need the Old Testament prophecy, and you need the fullness of the prophecy in in the New Testament to comprehend and divide and get the timing right. It, it takes time, and it takes study, and it takes trust in the Lord. So all I am sharing is, is my experience and inviting anybody not to believe what I say, but to trust the Lord and examine these points. Now, do we go, do, do the believe, does the believer who's received the, the, the faithful report, who's received the testimony of the Holy Spirit, who's one in Christ Jesus, who knows they're saved and knows they're born again and knows they're in heavenly places because, they're, because God is faithful and that believer has remained faithful by that faith, by that belief, because that belief has kept them faithful, because there's nowhere else to place your faith once you've been saved. So now you are in with Christ in heavenly places, and you're living in the flesh. You're walking in the flesh, but living in the spirit. And you have sin, you have your old sin nature, you have your shadow, and you have your spirit, you have the grace of the, of the precious Lord, and... and you walk in faith in, in the way that's been prepared. The way we follow after the saints, after the gospel, after the pre as it was preached in the beginning, we're following after the apostles of Paul and the examples of those who followed after. We're not following after men, we're following after the unleavened in, in those men, in those believers, in those faithful witnesses who've received the Holy Spirit and the testimony of the death, burial and resurrection and the baptism of, of Christ and the Holy Spirit and the fill, fulfilling of the Old Covenant and the, and the uh, blessing and the, f the completion of the New in the believer. So is a believer with Christ or is he in unbelief in the Great Tribulation to go through unbelief? Because this period... <clears throat> right, let me, let me show you my little plan. This is a simple plan of the whole salvation in a simple sense. So we've got the gospel of grace. So it's grace, because in the beginning was the word, and we know that uh, the Lord's eternal. Heavenly Father's eternal. The Son's eternal. The Word's eternal. The Holy Spirit is eternal and faithful to 
the word of God. So we know that it's grace. And then sin. Disobedience, sin, iniquity, idols, everything, the whole the whole thing. But in the old covenant, in the old blood covenant, Old Testament, Old Covenant, Old Promise between man, his people, Israel, it was only to Israel, and then later on it was for to go to the Jews. But it was also for Israel and the Jews at that time, because they had the court of the Gentiles. So Gentiles and Jews could have been saved in the Old Testament through faith. If you read Jeremiah chapter 7 and chapter 8, um, chapter 16 and chapter 30, you will see a picture of the dispensations, the, 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 the prophecy of two dispensations in the prophecy and the old, the old prophecy of the going into captivity because of unbelief. And then, um, and then you've got belief amongst that. You've got the faithful, Jeremiah. You have the faithful before that, David, and, that, and those houses and all the seed of Israel that were faithful. And then you have the unbelieving Hebrew. You have unbelieving Hebrew, you have believing he faithful Hebrew, faith alone. Look at um, Habakkuk or, and look at all, all through the Old Testament. So it's a blood covenant, but it's, it's faith alone in grace, Jehovah, who's Christ, the word of Jehovah, who's to come, the promised seed, the, the, the beloved son, the anointed one, the high priest, the prophet, the king, the Lord, the messenger, the anointed, the one who came, the Messiah, Christ, Jesus. That was the name given by the Father, by the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ. We have the authority of the law, we have the authority of God, and we have the Greek Old Testament scripture. Interp we know this through history and lawful evidence that, the, uh, that Paul and his generation and the Apostles' generation would have had access if they if they if they could afford it, or they would have local access to uh, communities when they would, would have had Aramaic scripture, Hebrew scripture, and they would have had the translation into Greek because it was a metropolitan country, a metropolitan nation. It had Babylon, Asia, Asia Minor, Africa. It had Europe. It had the whole world go into that metropolis, that center of the world. And you had Rome, had the most mightiest power in the, in, in, that, in the known world, the Roman Empire, with all the European empires, setting up um, estates and uh, regions and uh, government in, in Judea. And then you had the Babylonian past captivity governing certain areas, and then you had the Jews in the mix and their power, their, their law, their rights, completely choked in captivity. And that's where Christ was prophesied to come to deliver the seed and, and uh, fulfill all the prophecies given and then to tick them off and then to uh, initiate, appropriate the new and everlasting covenant which is in Zechariah, that you never run out of oil. You never have to fill the, the lamps with oil. You never have to make another sacrifice again. It was once and forever by the bread, the manna come down from heaven, laid his life down, allowed himself to be taken up and lifted up by sin and man in iniquity, and they killed and crucified the holy, precious uh, Saviour and God, who come down from heaven to, for that pur purpose, to save the Jew and the Gentile and draw all men unto himself. Salvation, love, righteousness, common sense and reason and to live lawful lives, to live loving lives, to not be above the law, but for the law to have no effect on you because you are living love. You are loving, you are making all decisions in love by the principle of the, the love you've received from Christ. So you, are, you have a just measure to, to live justly, so you're fulfilling the law by love, by warning your neighbour, and, and doing loving things to people, loving, growing in love for your fellow man and growing in love for your, for your Lord and your God and your Saviour and for the, the free course of the word. It's all, it's, all in, it's all written in your heart. It's all given to you as a free gift. 
So it's always faith alone in that grace to come. See, in the Old Testament, it's to come. They were looking forward to the promise to come, like we're looking forward in this dispensation, the promise that has been and that has come to come. So the question is, when is that time? Okay. So the Old Test, Old Covenant works of law. The old schoolmaster, you have to keep offering blood every time for the covering of your sins. But you're 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 not forgiven of your sins completely, once and forever. Like like Christ took away the sins, washed away the sins, like the prophet kissed the kissed the coals. Oh Lord, I'm undone. I've seen the Lord of Hosts, and he kissed, and the, and the cherubim passed him the coal, and he kissed it with his lips, and all his iniquity passed from him, and he was justified because he believed. Like the Israelites, who looked upon the serpent through faith, they believed and they were saved. Like all the old covenant saints, believed in Abraham, believed Moses, believed David, believed Saul, believed Jonathan, believed all the faithful saints, believed. And even the faithful sin, David believed. Even though he sinned, he believed that God, God wouldn't leave him in hell. Because he'd already believed and received. So he already knew that, that God was sovereign over Satan. And David knew that he was a sinner and God loved him. Because David would admit his sin and, and God would be just to punish him. And so it's the same with all, all the Old Testament prophets, the sins of the seed surrounded by the sins of the world. Faith alone to say that Israel were covered by that, that holy ordinance given by grace. It was a holy law. It wasn't from man, it was a true law which it, it can't, it self-writes itself, it self-justifies itself. Man can't write it, man can't undo it. Because it would convict man. And man lives by that law. All laws are written on those, that just principle. And our nation has that mercy, it has that extradition, because it's, it, it, it's bypassed the old... Um, it's a different order, you see. God works in a different way. So that way wouldn't work today because of the fulfilling of the old. So we have the, the uh, establishing of the new. We have the establishing of the old in love through Christ, the love of God to draw all men unto himself. So the day of, there's a day of the church, or the day of the believer, and I'm going to read the scriptures just to highlight. And then we have the day of the Lord. And then in between, if you divide the word correctly, and that's what I'm inviting believers to do, to consider that um, Jew and Gentile alike, if, you've, if, you're, if you're living as a, a believer and you're sharing the gospel and you're sharing that, oh, we go through tribulation, we go through wrath, we go through God's outpouring of contempt for unbelief, we go through um, a pouring out the strong delusion, we've got to live amongst that, that time. And there is saints that live among that time and there is the seed, the remnant. But it's a judgment, it's a judgment that comes at this point here, at, at, just before the day of the Lord. Let me show you that. Alright, so here we have the... This is the day of Christ where my point is on. That's, that's the church in Christ already in heavenly places. So that's earth, that's heaven, that's where Jesus is, that's where the Father is, that's where the Holy Spirit is residing in us, in, in the Father, in the Son, in the, in the Holy Spirit, it's in us. We don't go through that period, that's darkness. Well, that's grace there, that's the hidden seed, that's the branch. And, and then there'll be a, a, a Gentile equivalent of that body, like there is in that body there, but that's complete. So the complete is already in Christ Jesus, so it can't go through that period, it's impossible. So if you're teaching that you, you're, you're part of Israel and you've got a testament you're Israel and you've got the Holy Spirit, well, you, you can't put yourself in that position because you'll be denying the seed of Israel there, salvation, because you're saying, oh, don't worry, Israel will go through the tribulation, you'll be all right. Just make sure you believe in Jesus. Well, no, they need to believe in Jesus now. Read. You read from the beginning, the Lord's been crying out to the Jews. Although the Lord says how wicked and how incurable and how they're lost. 
and at how some of them are blinded. But the Lord is saving Israel and Judah currently. There is Israel and Judah in the bride, so he, the Lord can't do two. The Lord can't do one thing and then deny another thing. He does both at the same time. So those who don't believe get hardened and more blind, right? But they still hear the gospel because it's for them. But it comes from the Gentile. But it should always be to the Jew first, with them in mind, not not with them out of mind, but with them in mind to escape that period. Because the only ones who are going to be safe in that period is, is a little band who's never heard the gospel. And the whole world who had an opportunity to hear the gospel here, and they reject Christ there, the day of Christ, when whoosh, the rapture, you know, it, it may not even be a taking up, it may just be an instant, we're there, because we're already there. It's just like a lift in the, you know, waking up from a dream in a, in a jolt. And the whole body will be there in one go, Jew and Gentile, with all the saints, of the, all the Old Testament saints. And then, Zechariah 14, Second Thessalonians, that the Lord will return with all his saints, right? And that's all his saints there, because they get rec resurrected when the Lord comes, you see? So all his saints will be delivered, and that's when the judgment, you know, that's the final end. The Lord will stamp, block that pit off, and it'll be sealed, and then His holy city will keep that from coming out again out of the out of the, out of the pit, out of the bottomless myth, myths of you know the hole, and that will come, that will be the flood of fire and wrath, like in the flood. So the seed Noah, Christ is the type of Noah, the type of the church body the holy seed delivered from sin and death and hell and wrath which is which is the uh, antithesis of that it's the complete of that period it's the, the peak of that prophecy it's like the final cake of cake of prophecy it's the day of wrath the day of Jacob's trouble the day of the Lord so the day of the Lord is from morning uh, the night before through the night, first thing in the morning, the day of the Lord. We're, we are the day of Christ, we are with the Lord. So we don't go, we, we pass over that. We've passed through that already, because that's symbolising hell, the bottomless pit where the Lord descended. And tra you know, he, he, he was translated, he was crucified and descended into hell, and then he was resurrected, then he went back to his father. Then he will come back down for his church, and then day of day of the Lord. So that's a simple plan: faith alone in in through Christ alone. It's the same gospel. You're just looking at it in different. So faith alone in Christ alone. Faith alone in the old save save the saint. And faith alone in Christ alone will save the Jew and the Gentile lost in sin. The Jews are in sin, Judah got sin, Judah are in captivity, Judah are pinched, Judah are, are robbed of their inheritance through unbelief, Jacob's robbed of his inheritance through unbelief, and that's denied the Gentiles the word and the gospel. So that was given to the Jews, that was given to the Gentiles through the Jews who passed on the gauntlet, and, and the Gentile church body with the Jews in it, faith alone to the Gentiles, the Gentile, uh, the, the time of the Gentiles, by a, a Jewish body of belief, a Jewish foundation of belief in the Gentile, completely Jewish, completely one in Christ, the Gentile and the Jew, but now it is the, the Gentile's turn to lead the, to lead the gospel unto good works by grace, establishing the works completed by Christ, the Hebrew, Joseph, which is the love, forgiveness of sins, love thy neighbour as thyself and warn, and, and all the all the ordinances and things that the Lord has given us to help us and grow. So there there we have the period of the day of the day of Christ, the day of the church I've called it, because it's the day 
in Christ, you see, the church is in Christ, and then we have the day of the Lord, which if you read Zechariah 14, it will be when commemorate the Feast of Tabernacles, which is the covering, you see, the completion, the sealing of the, the, the day. So the Jew and the Gentile will, will have that eternal sealing and knowledge, the complete knowledge that day. Because it, that they would have been from heaven, they would have been from earth, created, grafted into eternity, taken up into eternity, the presence of God, then they will come back down on earth. Think what experiences that, that's going to do on that day. That's going to be a great day for every saint to, to share that walk behind the Lord, praising Him, the stones will be crying. You know, everything will be singing out. Don't go in that day, because that's the day where that thing is revealed. And you need to escape that day, and you need to warn all the world, the Jew, and the Gentile, the Pope, the Queen, anybody who who is a sinner and lost need, need this. They need salvation today. So let, let me give you just some few things to consider about the... Um, if I haven't covered it already. To, to study this out, don't trust me. You trust the Lord, you know, the Lord ain't going to rob you of, uh, your, of knowledge because he wants to correct it, he wants everybody to be in line with his word. Because that, that was a heart in Paul, that was a heart in all, all believers who, who've grown to that um, understanding and received that good report through the elders, you know, as the elders. Right, so we've got two books. Now, just I'd like, like the student, and this is something I'm cons considering, and it's something I've only just briefly considered, but I thought I'd like to share it, because it, it, there's always a need, but there's always somebody struggling with, an, with, with, with a certain area of scripture, and they're trying to find themselves, and they might have enough overburden with so much other confusion and, you know, adversity. And to give something basic to, to, to examine and then test, put it to the test and then pray. And that's all I've done. I, I examine things, I examine opinions. Sometimes I get caught out. But if you're always uh, re you know, re-evaluating and renewing, you will, um, the Lord will lead you. Right, so bearing in mind the day of Christ, I'm just, we're in two books. We've got a division in the two separate books. Right, consider that. Why is it in two letters? And it's, in the, it's in, in the second half of the New Testament and it's divided into two letters. Okay, so Paul has, div the Holy Spirit has divided this particular book into two. Right, and I don't know the full reason, but I'm just looking at the sig significance. So we get to chapter 5 in the first book. Now I've highlighted, the, there's a very fine division here and you, you need to study other scriptures and you need to keep studying until you've got enough pieces to lawfully line up what I'm sharing. Because I, I couldn't, I heard it first, the rapture, and I thought, oh that sounds wonderful. Oh wouldn't that be nice? Do you know I've never considered that? I thought, and I went, and I went to it, and I've never deviated. I've, tried, you know, I've looked at every side, honestly, and and every time, eighty percent of the time, I, it it doesn't, it lines up with the pre-tribulation rapture, from my understanding of the dispensation and the plan and prophecy. I I just can't. I've got too many scriptures to. If I put myself in that position, you go through the tribulation, it'll undo all my testimony, and that will undo the that will offend the Holy Spirit, that will offend me, and and I'll be double-minded. So I've had to proceed until I've got all doubt, shadow of a doubt, and I ha I haven't, I still haven't got all shadow of a doubt. I can still doubt because because we live by faith, and renewing of the mind and the spirit each day, it can fade. But each time I've studied it, it remains. So, um, so consider it. I'm, ju I'm just building on and considering the two divisions and sharing that with you to test for yourself. So, if we get, if you're in uh, Thessalonians number five, book chapter five, and if we see, <clears throat> but the times and the season. So, Paul, this is really a lot focused on dealing with what was stirring in the church, approaching a, 
a period in a milestone which is repeated in our time so the lord is saying to the believer in his time that, that which is prophesying in in our time to the same believer that those, those believers are asleep now and they're with christ in heaven whereas we're the same church body going through the same thing which is prophecy see because paul was just prophesying that which is and that which will be and that which will come so you know it's the same prophecy it's the same lord it's the same gospel so here's the division it's very very fine and like i say you need other scriptures but other times and seasons brethren you have no need that i write unto you for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So the day of the, even the day of the Lord will come as a thief to, tonight. Well, why will it come to a thief in the night? Because those people are in sin and unbelief. They're not going to know about the Antichrist. They're not going to know about the strong delusion. Only the ones who come to strong delusion are that will be the people who have a change of mind in that period. Everyone in that period would have had an, an opportunity to be saved. And the Lord will be stretching out. He's stretched out now. He's crying out now. He's reaching out. You know, the Spirit is just constantly, you know, seeking that free course to reach every single man, you know, to fulfill the Lord's mercy, His grace, which is completed on the cross. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as the thief of the night. Right, so the, the Holy Spirit, by Paul, is teaching, you know that that day is for unbelievers, right? Let's put it that way. You know that that day comes as a thief at night to those that are in unbelief in the great tribulation in the outpouring of wrath, etc. For when they shall say peace and safety and sudden destruction, they, well, he's not saying you, because you're not going to be there. For when they shall say peace and safety, we know when that is, when the Antichrist comes and sorts all the world's problem out, and then sudden destruction cometh unto them. Well, well, why? Because that's when the Jews of that area really start to be... Well, that's when the Lord starts to wake up the remnant, you see. But he's already delivered the remnant. And that delivered remnant will be a testimony to that remnant because there'll be no... There'll be, there'll be seeds planted. There'll be things correlating. So it'll all work to, all work to the Lord's good, and that's the branch that will be all saved in the day and they all realize when the antichrist comes you see and or or the or the signs and they will start to shake off the dust of their eyes and start to believe and it will turn their hearts to christ and they will be saved the moment they believe but they'll be still living in faith into the salvation to come but they will be restored to their blessings and they will know it and they will rest Just like they will, just like the just like the Jew does today, and the, and the captive Judah, and the captive seed of Israel, and the scattered seed, whether you're a sinful on your sinful path, your really wicked path, or you're on the righteous, sinful path with sin. There's two two divisions in the seed of Israel. There's this, the people who live for good and good conscience, and and they keep separate as best as they can, but they can't. Because of their unbelief, they cut. They know they can't be holy, and they know they're in punishment. These are the, the, the This is Judah. Okay, that's what you look for in Judah, and then then in Israel you got Ephraim and Manasseh. They're completely darkened. Dan completely darkened, but they're still the seed, and that they're part of the Gentile seed of equivalent to a Gentile. In that division of believer and unbeliever. But you've got a um, a believer in that which was, but not completely believing in Christ. You've got a, a a Jew that lives to his good conscience, who's good, he's good at heart. He's just in unbelief, so he's lost, but he's still beloved. And then you've got the lost seed, who are wicked and used by the the devil to persecute its own people, to persecute one another. And if you look through the patterns of the World War II, you will see carefully, if you, you study and you pray and you discern, you'll see that there is Jewish seed in the German army, there's Jewish seed in the British army, there's Jewish seed um, persecuting off the line of the 
the persecuted Jews, give them favour to persecute their own. And then you've got the Germans torturing them that were Jews and they didn't realise. Then you've got Gentiles that were... It, it really is that um, tragic because one, the devil dobs up one Jew, whacks it against another one and then they get mixed with the Gentiles and the Gentiles start yoking to the... you know, they become compromised in sin and, and, and the only people who get hurt is everybody. And then the devil stirs up against Christians, the law, and the Jews because of their inheritance, because it's God's inheritance, so it proves God. And unbelief doesn't want God in the picture, so it's going to persecute the Jews. So the world is ignorant to right and wrong. They're ignorant to the inheritance of the Jews and their right and their nation and its law and where the nation of and Great Britain's law come from. So there's a great significance between those two nations because uh, the Old Testament held the right of the scripture, of the oracles of the word. They had the, they had the gifts to exegete and divide the scriptures, but they were one body, so they all had to work together. The New Testament's fulfilled, we're all that whole body in one person, in Christ, in Joseph, in the fulfilling of that prophecy of that restoration the um, spirit of Elijah, which is, which is Christ. And, and it will draw in all men unto himself, Jew and Gentile, Jew first, Gentile. But today it's not to the Jew first, it's by the Gentiles to the Jew first and the Gentile. It's a reverse polarity, but it's always the Jews first because that's where it comes from, you see. You don't, the Lord hasn't changed the order, but he, he's, he's changed the responsibility so, you know, if you, you see in the Old Testament where I think it was Ephraim rode the back of the, the bull or the, the ox. Jacob went in front and um, he was by the side. It's, uh, I think it was uh, Judah. But anyway, there's, you know, that, 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 that's a type. So now it's the Gentile believer doing the, the labour of the, the plough. You know, that's the Lord's work in a type for the Jews of, of, of Ephraim riding on the back of it with the yoke, you know, light carried. Jacob walking in front, treading out the ground as a plough, you know, breaking up the, the lumps of the plough, you know, it's a bit easier for the plough and, and for the for the animal. And then the, the one on the side was just keeping it in a straight line. That's the type of the, the responsibility for the princes and the uh, elders of Israel, the shepherds, the ones who are given the authority to oversee everything. So now it's, it, the responsibility is a blessing to the, the Gentile believer who's been grafted into Christ, and the Jews sit back in the back seat because of their, their inheritance, their, their sin. So... You know, they, they're more um, humble and they're more refined and they're more of a blessing in Christ to the Gentiles who are magnified by the Jews in the body and the, and the Jews are magnified by the grace of, of God in, in their hearts, in their strength, in their faithfulness. Being, being converted from what they were completely sinful and dead to completely living with all the gifts so they are extra vessels of that full fullness they, they appreciate it more let's say because you've had a taste and you blew it so all, the, all, all Israel had a, had a taste and they lost it but they still retain it but the blessing the honor went to the Gentiles but that honor is still the Jews you see but it's shared and then it then it will all reverse again but but it won't reverse without the Gentiles they will reverse with it so we're all, it will all be will be completely equal and sealed and complete and the uh, you know it'd be all all one com commonwealth Jew and Gentile in and, and then there'll be the uh, the same division in the millennium because you'll have the unbelief outside the city and you'll have the believer in inside the city those with uh, Jewish um, and Gentile pasts beginnings. But now they've got no beginning, they're all one. So the day of the Lord is a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace, safety, then sudden destruction come unto them, and prevail upon a woman with a child, and they shall not escape. So they're going to go into judgment. 
because they didn't believe they weren't they didn't believe the Lord for yourselves know perfectly you, you you know perfectly you know you're sure you know you know you know you're not going in that but uh, and travail upon the woman uh, for when they shall say peace and destruction upon them as travail upon the woman and child they shall not escape but you brethren are not in that darkness that the day should overtake you as a thief you are not in that day so you're not in that day you're not in that day should you overtake you as a thief because you know perfectly well that it, it, only a thief it will only overtake those who are blind like a thief but you know perfectly well you're not of that day to overtake you as a thief you are you are all the children of light and the children of the day the day in Christ say so we are not of the night nor of the darkness so we don't go through the tribulation Jacob's trouble okay that's why the Lord that's why Paul said comfort ye one another with this because because they, they thought they blew it they thought they'd lost it in the midst of the past you know, that's even, it's exactly the same thing today, but it was more, to us it's more more naive, but to them, it's that they're in the same period, they don't know when, if it's that dispensation at the end. They might, nobody knew how long the gospel, because it went to all around the world, they didn't know how long it was going to take to sink in and develop and grow. So they were expecting the Lord to come back before the tribulation. So Paul's teaching them, right, so... Consider this, right, the first book is Paul on that side of the uh, tribulation and he's teaching prophetically the Holy Spirit. No, you're not going through that. You're not going through that period of, of wrath. I say that's the period of wrath. The church go the delivered, delivered from the wrath. And the Paul's saying, look, look, we're here. All right, that time is not yet, all right. You don't go through that that time. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't stop it. You know, if you hear any any anything other than what I said, you're not going through that period. Don't worry. Right, ignore it. You just trust the Lord. You trust uh, what what the Lord's given me to to share for you, for everybody, for the not not just about those in belief, but those in unbelief to come. So he said, "Oh, you're not going to go through that period." Right. So that's the first book of Thessalonians, and then the second book of Thessalonians. Consider this, say he jumps into that period of time, because that's the period he's in already, because that's his ministry, he's already in that time. Because he's been saved and delivered outside of Jerusalem, so the gates shut Jerusalem to the Jews, and it's out to the Gentiles now. But Paul's a Jew, he missed the beginning of the, the road, so now he's along the side of the bull, he's not sitting on the back and in the front, he's on the sidelines, you see, with the Gentiles. And he's a prisoner to the bull, because he's the one who's got to hold it all the way out the line. Now that's the responsibility of reverse to the Gentiles. So Paul is like in the fire all his life, all his ministry. For the Jew and the Gentile. And he knows that he that he understands that period more than anybody. And then then he's he jumps in the period he's always in the period and he's crying out from it back to those people saying, Look, you can't go through it. So the first book is you're not going through it, and the second book is look, look, I'm in it. You can't possibly go through it. So I'll get to that point in the second book. So I'll finish off first Thessalonians, and then I'll get to the second, and it, and hopefully that will be a help, an edifying, and a blessing from the Lord and the Holy Word. Or or it, it you'll go, oh no, you're wrong, and I can see this, but but you know, try don't trust me, trust the Lord. And whatever you do, you know, don't think you got it. Just keep, you know, keep studying. And keep measuring what remains and you will, that will build. And that won't be overturned because it is, it's, it's secure. Oh, excuse me, right. Let's get down to the last. Oh. Right, you are the children of the light children of the day we are not the night not the darkness so we're in the in the white in Christ we're not of that unbelief period because they believe the lie they, you know because they they love not the truth they love the lie over the truth ye are the children of light says the division and the children of the day in Christ the day of Christ we are then we are not of the night we're from the night in the light 
nor of the darkness in the great tribulation of unbelief or believing a lie over the truth. Therefore let us not sleep as do others but let us watch and be sober. Now sleep in this context is not die, it's let us give up and die in our new creature which will lead to sleep, okay? It would lead to physical death if you give up on the Lord. Oh no, oh, the, oh, oh doom, you know, we're going for the tribulation. I just can't cope, I've had enough, you know, there's no comfort in that. The Lord is in something wrong, and uh, it must be me, so then I'm going to go, I'm going to give up, I'm not, I'm not reading the scriptures anymore. I, I, I believe in Jesus, but I'm just too tired and I'll give up. So let us not sleep, let us not give up, and then that will lead into death, or, you know, that could, that's the end, that's the potential. It's not something you want to push. But, you know, you probably have to push a long way to, if you really wanted to die or sleep. For, for they that sleep, uh, let, therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. So let us trust and look up to that, uh, that day and be sober. So don't get caught away, don't be leaven, you know, you know walk, aim for that soberness. Because that's what's been my salvation, is somebody who has soberness. Who can consistently walk. I've got a, that incurable disease and curse. And I'm like, this is a believer in my sanctification. Now, up and down. It took me 40 years to get get to the point where an elder would take five, a couple of years, five. I, I, I can't honestly say. But they're almost there. They're there in their boots. They just need a... You know, walk around the, you know, a few days learning on the job with the Lord and their boss. And he takes them around the factory, whereas me, I had to go through school, I had to go through all the healing and growing before, you know, and all I wanted to do is go around the streets and be sober. But I wasn't sober, I was in a mess. So that, that soberness in, in the bride, in the body, in the, in the believer, in the Jew and the Gentile, in Christ, gave me that... Um, Help me with that anchor, with that st patience, stability, and that correction, and, and the need for soberness, and and just live uh, and follow, looking to looking up to the example they're following in, which is in what Paul's taught, what the Holy Spirit's taught. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. If you give up, you stop believing. If if you give up, it's like you've let go of unbelief. Your eyes not single. That doesn't mean you're not safe, but you will return to darkness your light will dim and, you, and you'll wonder if you are saved and the devil will turn you over and stick your head down the toilet and they, that, that they that be drunken are drunken in the night so you could return into sin and get swept up in your old you know your old uh, whatever you know your rebellion and your joy for a you know kick your feet up and kick your shoes off and go you know let it all out that sort of leavened um, lasciviousness, whatever, that, uh, that wildness, that partying. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith, so we live by faith each day, renewing ourselves in, in, our, in our fellowship, in our faith, in our walk, and love. You know, put on that love we've already received, for a helmet, and the hope of salvation. So we're putting on our, we're putting, re-putting our trust in Jesus. Being refreshed in the salvation we've already anchored in our hope. For God had not appointed us, us, the believer, those who believe, whether in fellowship or not, whether out, whether out of action and asleep, whether they're asleep, whether they're awake in being sober or striving to be sober, overcoming, you know, from the point of sleep to the point of soberness, they're going in that direction. Anyone in the body, anyone who's been saved, anyone who's been born again, for God had not appointed us. You know, that's not, that's not exclusive, that's inclusive. To wrath, but to attain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. So not, no wrath, but to obtain salvation. So we, do we go through the tribulation to obtain salvation? Or have we already, already take, obtained our, our salvation? The salvation that was, the salvation that is, that we received, and the salvation to come. So we've, we're receiving that which we've received when it comes. 
and that will be obtaining the full knowledge by and of our Lord Jesus Christ. So at that point we would have obtained our salvation because we have been delivered from the wrath which was appointed unto the wicked. For God have not appointed us to wrath. Now you tell me where the wrath of God is, in what period? Is it Jacob's trouble? Is there another period of wrath? Is there a period when the Lord right, blows his stack? Sodom and Gomorrah, he blew his stack. And then he blew his stack with individuals with a little anger. You know, just a right, you know, just a, a huff and a puff. But this is the this is the whole lot. This is like he's the Lord's blowing his top. He's completely had enough. He's gonna de deride himself. He's gonna break down, he's gonna you know, our, our Lord's going to be in a state that I don't think anybody would want to experience. That's what he would have been, the motions he would have gone through, the sovereign, holy, eternal God. He went through all that suffering. You imagine the turmoil that God goes through, the pain, the agony, and he's got that complete redemption and power. But he's, also, he also, he's still got the pain and the scars from suffering that. You know, how long did it take the Lord to get over when he got back to heaven? You know, was he all right as rain? I'm sure he was. But but did he? does that deny that he went through those experiences and he hasn't got a memory of them? And that they're there, those scars are there, those wounds are there. Because if you take those wounds away, what Lord is going to remember what he, he's paid for? So, we're not, we don't go through that period. Because we've been delivered from that. That's a period where the Lord lets out all his anger on those who didn't believe unto salvation. So that 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 must be perfectly clear in the believer's mind. Because if you teach you going for the trans salvation, you may, brothers and sisters, you may be robbing a Jew or a, a seed that opportunity to be saved today thinking that I oh, don't bother witnessing to the Jews they're all deaf and blind well that's not true that's a lie you know there are those who are deaf and blind through unbelief but, but you can say that about the Gentiles so why are the Gentiles not being saved then can you not can the Lord not um, contend for the faith and overturn a, a, a Jew with, with a testimony of uh, from another Jew with Christ and, and know how to reach that person, or just the Lord to use that person. Right, so here again is another, another division. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. So if you know not God, right, in flaming fire, taking vengeance, this is a day of wrath. You know, this is the second book. So consider what I'm saying about Paul being in the fire, telling those believers, past and present, about this day from that perspective. And then the first book of Thessalonians, Thessalonians, he's he's from another perspective, saying you can, you're not going through that. But that might that may not be true, but but just consider that perspective to, as you uh, view the scriptures and you exegete the scriptures, because that's the Paul, that's the position that Paul was in, in the spirit, in the flesh. He was a, he was a bound, a prisoner, as a saved full Jew, he'd seen the resurrected Lord he'd received the Holy Spirit, he'd received the fullness of the Father and he'd, seen the, he'd, he'd received his salvation in Jesus Christ and saw the Lord resurrected and he was a Jew he had, the Lord just gave him that full responsibility for the Jew and for the Gentile and that's what was in his heart and he was a prisoner in the fire of adversity in hell, of a, a type, a tribulation type, you see. The saints go through tribulation. How do we know we go through tribulation? Well, because Brother Paul went through it. He went through that fire. He waded through all that fire all the way up to the end of his life till, it, till he was brutally murdered. And don't believe that he had a nice death. You know, they'd have dug him up a thousand times and spat on him. You know, he wasn't, he wasn't loved. Because everyone heard him and, and heard the gospel, but all the known world shut the door on it. You know, otherwise he'd be living today, wouldn't he? And, and he'd be, in, you know, walking around the walking around the town still. 
And then flame and fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. What's to, what's to obey the gospel? It's to believe. To believe you're saved and you're not going through the wrath. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction. So how come the saints are going to be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power? With the, when they're in him and with him. You say, oh, well, they're going to be snatched up then. Well, what... If they're going to be snatched up then, why are they, you know, why have they been saved from that period to be snatched up? Now, the only people who are going to be snatched up from that period when the day of the Lord happens is the Jews that never heard the gospel and believe, and and the remnant that are asleep in the earth. They're asleep. They're lost. They don't know Jesus. They haven't heard the gospel. They don't even know their Jewishness in part, and they're going to wake up. And any any Jew or Gentile that didn't believe in Jesus, who had the opportunity and turned their back on it, the Lord's not going to hear their prayer. It's too late. You seek me early, you're not going to hear you because you've gone into wrath. You've gone into that wrath, so you've got to be careful what you share with people. Especially if you're a, a Hebrew, or, you're a, or a Jewish ministry, and you're teaching that, well then you're robbing Christ of, of saving his people. You're robbing the Father of the Gospel being preached. In truth, in spirit and in truth to the whole world, Jew and Gentile. By the Gentiles, for the Gentiles, but to the Jew first, the Gentile second. When he shall come, right, let's get, get here. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Break, right? That's talking of the destruction that we're not in. Because we've been, first Thessalonians, to do it from the wrath to come. Uh, First, first Thessalonians 5 and the Lord now that now, now he's talking from the Lord the Holy Spirit is talking in the judgment the punishment everlasting destruction not everlasting life everlasting destruction we pass from everlasting destruction unto life in Christ the day of Christ to come back in the day of the Lord so there's there's a division right there's a break when he shall come to be glorified in the saints he's, he's glorified in the saints and he's going to come and be glorified in the saints he saves out of tribulation and all the saints that are in the Old Testament, right? So it's the Lord's day with all his people, all gathered in one, post, old, new, tribulation. Old, new, tribulation, gone up, come down, and then we get, we're going to get to the the, 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 the reopening of the, the break in that one. So there's a break there. Talking about all, you know, comfort there, look, before. Uh, verse 1 to 5, part 2, part 5, 6, 7, then 8, it goes into the judgment. So it's all the comfort of the bride, the church, the Jew and Gentile. Starts off with the bride, the church, then it goes into the judgment, then it's back. Okay, who then shall come to be glorified? There's a middle bit, you know, past and, past and present, past and future, in the eternal... In the eternal um, now you know now past and pretty so the lord's talking in the middle area look, from heaven when he shall come to be glorified in the saints and to be but admired in all them that believe because of our testimony among you was believing that day so everyone in that day that's the day of the lord so the, the rapture tribulation so the rapture miss that and the, the day of the lord comes back here so you got that you got that end there so that is the middle of the tribulation. This part is that tribulation, and that part is talking about the the either side of this that break. That from verse eight to verse ten, uh, verse eight and nine are solely on the great tribulation, the wrath. Uh, verse ten past is now the Lord's going back. To this, this, these believers in Christ, and then coming back to the day, um, the last day, and He shall come to be glorified in the saints. So he's, so he's already been glorified in the saints. So the day of Christ, He hasn't come to be glorified because He's already glorified in them. His day, when He shall come to be glorified in the saints and be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. That day is Christ today. So that's that's the Lord's return. That's the Lord saying you're not going in that bit, and that's the Lord in eternity in the saint in the believer. 
So that is the, uh, if that doesn't help anybody line up the word, let's see what this says, right. And, um, and getting the division of that um, period. Uh, and if you get that, it, you will find all the other scriptures in the Old Testament will line up. So let's just read this. I don't, I'm not, my mind needs to jog in. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course. So now we're going to the present. And this, the present is always, always applicable in the old and the new. But this isn't going to be so much applicable in that other period, right? So this would be irrelevant if we're going through the Great Tribulation. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course. Why? Because we want to deliver this, the lost world from that period. And be glorified, even as it is with you, see? Don't rob other people. Make sure the word has free course to everybody. Free course? Oh, not free course minus the Jews. Oh, free course minus that, that nation. Oh, minus the uh, uh, Catholics, minus the Islamists. No, free course. The Lord's grace and outstretched mercy were in the word, in the, in the power of the word, of the testimony of the Holy Spirit in the word, in the Lord's completed heart. Have free course and be glorified in, in you, with you, first. first the first love. Uh, we love Jesus because he loved us first. Isn't it with you? And that we may be delivered from the un unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. We may be delivered from them now and in that period when they're all in that bucket. They'll all be in unbelief because they won't have faith. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. So is the Lord lying there? But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you. So that means if you're out of the way, you're not being established. If you're in the way and you're getting things right and the Lord's leading you and blessing you, you are being established and he will keep you from evil. He'll keep you from death, he'll keep you from blood, keep you from violence. But you'll get persecution, tribulation and pain. But you won't be going in that evil period. Period, period. You won't. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you. We, we trust. We trust the Lord. And we trust that he's got you. That you both do and will do the things which we command you. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God. And into the patient waiting for Christ. So there's a question, oh, when, when are you waiting for Christ? Are you going to go through that tribulation and wait for him? You, you ain't going to last five minutes because you'll be a dead duck. You're already being, you're on a list now, and if it weren't for Christ, you'd be dead. You'd be fried in your bed, dragged out. You, you just wouldn't realise what's going on in, in darkness. And ne neither does the person who, who's got the best idea and knows the complete picture, but, but Jesus. So he knows best. And he said to live each day by faith, patiently wait, be sober, share the gospel, and rejoice. And read, you know, just pray with the Lord. Pray, pray for all men. Forgive all men. Love, love your enemy, and love. Allow that spirit to grow within you, and help you overcome those things, that, those patterns that you you might still carry, those those shadows, and the patient waiting for him. Waiting for him that we've received, that we were delivered from the wrath to come. And I'm going to close there in the precious holy name of our Lord. And the, the name uh, the eternal Father gave through his word. Jehovah's word. He gave his son. And that name was the one who, who the bride is looking up for to come. Patiently waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Maranatha, brothers and sisters, and uh, every blessing to you. In Jesus Christ's name, Amen.